God allows Satan to afflict Job? Does that prove that the Lord will afflict us? Really interesting a second half of this, Pete. What do you, what do you, uh, what do you have to say on well, this? I, I don't want to sound super spiritual here, but uh, I think Job chapter 1, verse 1, really, God was so proud of his servant Job. And the Bible says, this is what the Bible says, there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and a man was blameless, upright, and one who feared God and shunned evil. So that's what, what it says there. And then if you drop down to verse 8, God says the exact same thing about Job. 1.8, then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job that there's none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? I mean, for God to, to, to be bragging on a man, it, it's simply amazing. So I, you know, I really believe with all of my heart God knew that Job was going to come through with flying colors. Uh, and and um, I, I don't believe so much that, you know, because again, we think, will God do that to us? If God does it to us, if he brought you in, he'll bring you out. Uh, so if, if we go into a tough situation, because many people fear that, yeah, people in our congregation, will God do to me what he did to Job? God will never leave you nor forsake you. That's the That's bottom right. line there. So I, I believe God, uh, uh, it was a purification process, and I believe Job came out on top. So as we will come up on top, as long as we continue to trust in the Lord with all our heart. Yeah, I, I think that we have to dis continue that discussion, though, because that's a great answer. But it will. There, affliction happens. Right. A horrible right. affliction right. sometimes. Where do you go well, with that? Well, I heard a preacher uh, preach a message one time, and he said, God will give you double for your trouble. And if you look at the last chapter of the book of Job, yes, yes. God doubled everything that, that Job had, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And, and so that, I, I think what you see here is the sovereignty of God at work. Yes. I mean, uh, you know, was there other righteous servants walking the face of the earth at that time? There probably was, but it was God's sovereign choice to, uh, if, if you will, put Job on front street and, and let Satan have access to his life. Uh, knowing that, you know, God was going to be working in Job's life. And, and again, I believe what Pete said, that God knew uh, Job's heart. And he knew that, because uh, Job even said, the Lord knows my heart. And he knows that when I've tri been tried, I will come forth as gold. And, yeah. and so, you know, I believe that it was, a, it was about a, uh, a purification and testing and confirmation of, of Job's uprightness. Yeah. In the world, you will have tribulation, Trials right? But, but take courage, I've overcome the world. Right. One thing I don't like about the question, the way it says it is, why did God allow Satan to afflict Job? Does that prove that the Lord will right. afflict us? Yeah, well, the yeah. Lord wasn't afflicting Job. Right. He was no, exactly. letting Satan afflict him. So clearly God's not going to afflict us either if it means for our harm. Does God chasten his people when they're wayward? Yes. Does he test them at times? And this was a test from the part of God. Obviously it was an affliction from the part of Satan. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that that's something that God does do um, at times. But if he does test you, as you said, Pete, I mean, if you're really his, that will come through. And whatever you suffer, you'll be rewarded for. Just a couple of verses. Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are, are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things against you. Rejoice and be glad for great is your reward in heaven. Uh, and Peter says the same things, rejoice insofar as you share in Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed, and that, you know, suffering produces endurance. And so, yes. you know, yes, there's hardships in our lives, but if we trust in Christ, it's going to be for our reward in heaven, and it's going to be that we show forth his glory even now, and, uh, and, and it's a great privilege to suffer for Christ. So, you know, I think one of the things, too, that you have to look at is that uh, before Job was ever afflicted, if you're going to have that type of affliction, you've got to have that type of hedge. Yes. Job yes. had a hedge around the bottom. He did. And so there was a difference between some people just going through stuff because they make bad decisions. Mm -hmm. Job, the Bible says he had a hedge. The Bible says that Satan couldn't even get to him. Mm -hmm. And God allowed that to be lifted. So to understand this and really grasp it, you have to understand God, Job was greatly beloved of God. Oh, amen. Greatly beloved. He wouldn't have been that protected. Yeah. So for me going into it, understand that will the Lord allow us to go through things like that? If he's allowing the hedge to be lifted, I have to trust the same God that had the hedge there mm -hmm. because he wouldn't put me in all of that if he didn't have his hand all around me and, he, and I wasn't greatly beloved of God. So hard to preach it because nobody wants to go through that stuff. But mm -hmm. as long as I had the hedge up front, 
I'm all right. With it. <laughs> and you know that was Satan's complaint. He goes, "You've put can't I can't I can't touch him. I can't touch his wife. Matter of fact, I'm not even allowed on his property." Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because a friend of mine who's a, Ch a native Chinese, he he talked about how in China they have a theology of suffering that we don't really have here oh, because of no. the suffering that they've been through. It's an interesting, uh, interesting take on that. Uh, sometimes our experience uh, helps us or hinders us when we're trying to get at God's purposes.